you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemy. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. I say again, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup runneth over with blessings. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So, what I want to talk about is where we all been from. And yet, those that are in the world are still struggling. Now, I want you to imagine how the world indulges in their pleasures. But it's only a fleeting moment. The world was always inside the, uh, their, uh, I don't want to say inside, the world is always uh, participating in the lust of whatever is being offered. But again, it's only for a fleeting moment. The world doesn't recognize what they are starving for. Because what happens is, when they come home from a hard day's work, and they sit at the table, whether it be their family or friends or what have you, what happens is they enjoy what's on the table, but it comes with issues. It comes with their attitude. It comes without God because they don't know. They think that they are the ones that set the table. They feel that they're the ones in control of what's on their table. I pay my bills. I pay my rent. I pay my mortgage. I pay my condo. I work 40 hours, I do this, I do that, I put clothes on my back, a roof over my head, it's always I, 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 because that's the way the world works. They don't see God in their everyday life. Regardless if they believe or don't believe, God still loves them. God still cares for them. And what happens is they justify their actions by using scripture. Let's eat, drink, and marry. For today, for tomorrow, we all die. Oh, That's their attitude. But we as Christians, or we as believers, we don't have that kind of life. We don't have that kind of time to have a, a pity party. Now, I'll give you a prime example. Bless you. Sister Flo comes home, and then she sees that the table is set. There's mac and cheese. There's collard greens. Bless you. There's candy yams. Ted salad. <laughs> There's fried chicken or baked chicken. <laughs> Apple pie. <laughs> so, what happens is that the table is set. So, you have your family over, and one of the things is you, you guys talk about family values, you talk about things that happened for the day, you guys talk about what happened last week, all positive uh, feedback from one another within your family. But we don't have the luxury, as believers, to come in and see this and then stop complaining. Because what happens is, when you come in, you see all this, yeah, you're starving, you want to eat. But the moment you sit down, does it make any sense to complain about how you are, how the people are treating you at work? Does it, does it make any sense to complain about how uh, your bills are always late and you're trying to struggle? Because the people that are eating with you, they see you struggling, and you can't really enjoy this meal. There's no way you can enjoy this meal with you bickering and mourning. And we call ourselves followers of Christ, but yet the table's set, and we already know who set the table. We know who set the table, right? So if we believe that he set the table, we don't have time for our own foolishness. Because the moment you do that, then Brother Tyrone starts complaining. You know what I'm saying? Then this one starts complaining. This the child starts complaining. Everybody starts complaining, and nobody really enjoys the meals that the table is set for. 
Amen? Amen. <laughs> so, and we know that that meal is everlasting. We know that that meal gets wrapped up for later. We know that that meal is put away sometime for leftovers. We know that we know that we wrap it up and we give the food away. And when we give, it's because of the fact that we're blessing those. It is because you can't do nothing with the food if you're giving it away. You can't say, no, no, save me a plate that you've already saved for somebody else. So if you wrap up a plate for Sister Cheryl, that plate is no good for you anymore. It's only good for Sister Cheryl. Even though Sister Cheryl broke bread already, she's taking it with her. Because she knows, see, that's what, I, what the word means, that the word is everlasting. That's what it's talking about. And the reason why I read, I give you an analogy because I know everybody can understand what it means to starve or to be hungry. And the word, the world is starving for love. The world is starving for forgiveness. Yeah. The world is starving for grace, mercy, love and kindness. For all the characteristics of God, they don't realize it because they don't believe in God. And because they don't follow God, they are always continuously becoming in, in starvation. Yeah. And spiritually, they get skinnier and skinnier, and they're losing weight, and they're losing weight because they're not eating anything that's edible. <coughs> what they're eating is just for the moment. They're only eating for whatever, whatever they can grab. They're not eating anything that has anything with nutritional value. And this is where the word of God comes from. The word of God gives you something that's more than what money can buy. The dead where it gets ugly. Because when the table is set, I want you to realize something. Here's what the scripture says. It says, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Do you think that God is allowing you to eat, to gloat, and bless you while your enemies are starving? That doesn't make any sense. So why does he prepare a feast in the presence of his enemy, of your enemies? Does that make any sense? Or is that a good question, sure? It makes sense? It makes sense. Exactly. So your enemies see you doing well. Your enemies see uh, how God has blessed you. And now they're trying to figure out, they're like, wow, how do I go about this? I already know how flow is. I already know how flow used to be. So how do I get to the point where flow is, has this aura about her? There's something about her that makes her so special. But yet, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not talking to flow because we're enemies. But there's something about Flo that I want to know about, and I can't go around it. I have to go through it. So I have to, so my enemies become my friends. They may not realize it, and they may be envious, jealous. They may be in turmoil to, to uh, have a downward spin in their own life. But they're grasping on to something because, again, they are stopped. Amen? Amen? So why does God anoint you with oil and prepare you for what? Why does God anoint you for Because there's challenges. So instead of this apple pie, it might be patience. Instead of this, this potato salad, it might be death. Instead of this candy yams, it might be suicide. Instead of this chicken, fried chicken or whatever you want to call it, it might be uh, uh, homeless. This collard greens, no job. This mac and cheese, now you don't have no car. And now you have to still eat this. Even though God prepared this plate for you, you still have to eat from this plate. So when it says that, uh, that the scripture says, my cup overflows with blessings. But that doesn't mean you're getting blessed. That means your enemies 
are getting blessed. Because all these are, are the experiences that you are going to be challenged with. You're going to overcome them, but you still have to eat from them. Just because it's good for you, that doesn't mean it tastes good. I remember when I, when I was a kid, my mother used to make us uh, take uh, take medicine. And we would sit at the we would sit at the table. <laughs> we would sit at the table with the cold. And instead of coughing like your regular cough, you go. Because <laughs> <laughs> the moment you stop coughing, you knew that fix is coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You knew that the a spoon of fix. So what we did was we tried to play it off, but my mother. She, she was like a, a, a dog whistle. She could hear all, everything. So now, when she gave us the medication, it's good for me, but it was nasty. And you couldn't go to the bathroom. You couldn't have a glass of water because she knew that in her mind, in her old-fashioned way, it diluted the medication. So you had to wait a couple of hours before you'd be thirsty as all. <laughs> But that's that's the way that's the way it is. It, 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 it tastes nasty, but it was good for you. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the word of God. Yeah. You know, there's no there, I mean there's times when it's comfortable. There's times where we have pleasure in the word of God, but the Bible doesn't say that we're gonna go without trials and tribulations. The Bible doesn't say that there are gonna be times we might be homeless. Yeah. Because how can you minister to someone that you know nothing about? Yeah. And even if you don't know something about it, you might have to eat something just so you can relate to that person yeah. or direct them to some. I'll give you a prime example. Let's say this was my table, and on this table it said homosexuality. So if somebody's struggling, even though I don't have that experience, I know somebody that has the experience. So I have to, whatever's on this table, I have to love it. I have to accept it. You know what I mean? Whether it be drug addiction, whatever their issues are, I have to, how should I say, invest or ingest the food, digest the food that is being prepared for me. Because the blessing is not always about me. It's about somebody else. And this is where we have uh, uh, issues that are just like social issues. With police brutality, we got people that are uh, that, that are strung out on the streets, and we can't just be pacifiers and not actually use our voice. You know, because the moment you become silent, that's the moment you already chose the side. Bless you. You already chose the side. You know, you, you, you already there. picked a side to where you could, where people will say, you know what, you're not going to stick up for me, you're not going to say anything for me. Then it's over here. I already know you're already on that side. It's like I'll be at work and somebody will talk about Christ and get it all messed up. And it's my it's my duty to straighten it out. Especially if they're coming from the word of God. They want to talk about Islam or whatever their religion. I really don't know and I won't even indulge in that because I don't put myself in that situation. But they talk about my Christ, my my Savior. One that died for me, and you're trying to say something like different. I'm I have a problem with that. So, this is what you're going to hear. So, the word is, in other mm -hmm. words, I'll take this and I'll bring it to work. I'll wrap it up, put it in the refrigerator, and it becomes a to go plan. And I'll take it to work or wherever I need it to go. Because the moment I need it, that's when I use it. Amen. Amen. So, you know, so we all know. That the table is set. But you gotta be willing to know what the sacrifices are, the sufferings are, the ple the blessings that come with it, and also the challenges. Because if you don't know, then you better make sure that you, when you pull up to the table, make sure you have all the utilities in here. Forks, knives, napkins, because it's gonna be a long night. You just can't, you ain't walking, I walk that off that table, away from that table with a, with an empty stomach. God won't let you do that. Amen. God won't let you do that. Amen. Especially if you claim it, you ain't walking away from them. You might not like what you eat, but you're definitely going to have something to chew on. Amen. 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 God, let us pray.
Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again, Lord God. We thank you for this moment, this time, this minute, that you have just given us a word today that we can uh, break bread and take home, Lord God. And while all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I ask anyone here that would love to know this Christ that I say, please raise your hand. Praise God. Those that like to rededicate themselves, please raise their hand. Praise God. Those that raise their hands, please stand. Please repeat after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner. sinner. Saved by your grace. Saved by by your grace. grace. I ask of you. I I ask ask of you to forgive me. To to forgive forgive me. me. I accept your son. I accept your son. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ. As my Lord and Savior, to rededicate, renew, renew, renew my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Food for thought. Son to the Holy Spirit. May you guys keep a hedge of protection in our travel mercies each and every day. And let the church say amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God.